Get ready for the scariest game of Uno Sony Pictures can provide. A group of diversity all sorts try to read their horror scopes and accidentally curse themselves in the process, the silly duffers. It's an astrologer kill nightmare. Get ready for a buttload of hop, skip and jump scares in Tarot. Hello there, you loose units, and welcome back to another episode of Spicy Boy Reviews. I'm, of course, your host, Andrew Riles. That's right, the new disposable horror by the name of Tarot. Uh, okay, no, it's pronounced Tarot. <laughs> the French. This is actually based on a book called Horror Scope by Nicholas Adams. This film adaptation is directed by Spencer Cohen, who's known for directing three shorts, along with Anna Halberg, who's known for directing this. Spencer and Anna have been credited for writing on a bunch of films in Hollywood. How these two got to direct a worldwide cinematic release for their debut, who bloody knows. We open the film on a bunch of college diversity all sorts, at an Airbnb in a mansion, drinking beer and bonding in the middle of nowhere, which can only go well. They discover that they have ran out of beer, shock and horror, so they go into the massive mansion and hunt around for some hidden booze. They come across a basement door that is heavily padlocked, and they figure that the best course of action on a hired Airbnb is breaking in. They then discover in the basement Ed and Lorraine Warren's Museum of Scary Shit. One disposable post-teen comes across a little wooden box with some pentagram emblem on it filled with the most scariest looking hand-painted tarot cards in existence. And the most logical thing to do with these totally not cursed cards is get the final girl to read everyone's horoscopes. <laughs> what could go wrong? Then these dumbasses decide to go to the living room and play a game of 52 pickup foreshadowing. Each 20-something cannon fodder in this group of friends all have a different star sign to each other. And they all each get their own final murder monster, I mean, final fortune card read to them. One gets the priestess, one gets the fool, another gets the hermit, one gets the magician, another the hangman, and the final couple, of course, get the devil and death itself. Hmm, I wonder how each of these college students will end up dying. I noticed that there was no Scorpio in this group of friends, because if there were, they would get one look at these obviously cursed cards and say, Ooh, fuck this shit, I'm out, I'm out And for those of you who are playing at home, get your horror movie bingo cards ready, because the cliches are a-coming. It's not long before each one of these 20-something college students start getting picked off one by one, and they end up tacking on a cheeky little investigation side plot involving an elderly lady who has had a lot of backstory fibre in her diet because she unloads a massive session of exposition dumping. The movie is simple enough in concept, which I actually liked. This film feels like a movie plot that would be straight out of the 90s, which gets more and more obvious as the film goes on because you start to learn that it's just a watered-down version of Final Destination. The best character, however, is Paxton, played by Spider-Man Trilogy's Jacob Batalan. He was the comic relief of this film, an all-around rad dude. I dug the character, I actually found him amusing. Plus it goes to show the actor Jacob in this film it has so much more on-screen chemistry than anyone else in the cast. Of course you know this film is going to be a jump scare bonanza. But then it all becomes a lot of rinse, wash and repeat. Because each cursed creature or monster, if you will, coming after these people, creeps up to them, the sound drains out, then pop up out of nowhere right up against the screen, and they all let out the exact same high-pitched squeal. It got really boring. I'm sick of modern horror films thinking that they have to do this. There is something way more creepy and unsettling in silence. It would be way more effective if these creatures waited in the dark, just out of focus, and the character on the screen kind of knows that they're there, and they're trying to make it out in the dark if they can see them or if they're not, and let some time pass, and then for the reveal, the creature in the dark lets out like a croaky whisper or something. That would be more terrifying. But no, modern horror film, got to have that monster jump at the screen with a Fuck off. I compare this horror movie trope to WWF in the 80s. All the wrestlers in the 80s WWF would cut their promos by yelling and screaming at the screen to show how angry, intimidating and tough they were. A la wrestlers like Hulk Hogan and The Ultimate Warrior. But the one who was really effective and unsettling was none other than Jake the Snake Roberts. 
He talked quietly. He even whispered sometimes. And you believed this guy would actually kill you. In saying all this criticism though, I didn't completely hate the film. I really did love that runtime of 1 hour 30 minutes, but it is very middle of the road and very forgettable. I think out of everything, I just love the concept. Like I said, it's a watered end version of Final Destination. I'd say this movie's perfect for like if you're a teenager going out with your group of friends and just want some cheap silly fun. But a classic, this ain't. Anyway guys, that's my cheeky little review of Tarot. Write down below if you've seen it, what are your thoughts on it, but more importantly, what is your favourite disposable teen horror film? And of course, if you've made it this far into the episode, please give me a thumbs up because your love and support keeps me going because I just love movies and I assume you do as well. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe icon because I give it an episode weekly and I'll see you back here next week for the next review. But until then, stay spooky, kids.